All right, guys, it's a super cold day in the bluegrass, and <laughs> when it's cold, I get stood up. When I get stood up, I try to make productive use of that time. So some people have been emailing me, asking me how their dogs are doing, and uh, so I'll just take a few minutes and show you. That way I don't have to answer every single email individually. So here, let's do Nigel first. Nigel's a pretty good dog. We can just knock this out real quick with Nigel. Come on, Nigel, let's go. All right. So Nigel, it's about a one-year-old white lab. Oh my gosh, belongs to my friend Jamie Hill. Oh, very good, Nigel. He doesn't have any problems with anything. He's about ready to go home. Good boy, Nigel. Oh, it's a very good dog. Oh, we gotta be careful here. There's frost on this balance beam. Good. Wait, very nice, easy. Good boy, Hup. Oh my gosh, it's 20 degree weather. It's got you being real careful, doesn't it, Nigel? Very nice. And wait. Very nice. You notice Nigel doesn't pay attention to this racket that's going on, this rambunctiousness here in the tunnels. Easy. Oh, very good dog. Hup. Very nice. Easy. Watch your feet on this frosty board. And wait. Very nice. Easy. Oh, that's perfect, Nigel. I think you're going to get an A+. Plus. Oh, very nice. Look at Tucker. Now, Tucker has strategically placed himself up here because <laughs> he knows <laughs> as these other dogs get towards the end of their training, then what we do is uh, we give them treats on the pause points. And this table is a pause point, right? So he just went ahead and positioned himself up here. He said, I'll skip the work and go right to just waiting for the treat. All right, so Nigel, he gets a good uh, grade. Oh, look here, guys. Oh, this is my new little project. Oh, we haven't named him yet. Just got him on Saturday. It's already awesome. <laughs> but he doesn't know about this 20 degree weather. He said, dang, Stoney, I didn't know we were going to work that hard. Yep, we put that work in. And here's Penny. Hey, Penny, what you doing? So Penny's little golden doodle. Belongs to a nice lady from Brandenburg. <laughs> Come on, Penny. Let's show him your vocabulary. Hup. Very nice. Hup. Oh. And Penny is the Eddie Haskell of this bunch. Like, <laughs> me and Penny get along perfectly. Whenever she, she sees me coming out the door, she literally acts perfect. And uh, then Eli gives me reports later <laughs> that she's a troublemaker. She's beating up on the little dogs and she won't pay attention to Eli. Oh my gosh, you're smart though. But she's one of my favorites. Okay, because I really doesn't care if she minds <laughs> for Eli or not. Come on up, very good girl. And this is Lewis. Now, Lewis just got here, so ain't a lot of progress to report other than uh, he likes to get in the way. Get out of the way, Lewis. Oh, come on, Penny. Oh, very nice. Come on, come on. Up, 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 up. Very nice. And besides Lewis, we have this short hair here, Denny. And you'll notice he just kind of throws his body into every scene. He tries to oh, bully Penny at every opportunity. Very nice. There's Tucker, the Bernese Mountain Dog. He's a Democrat. He likes to sit on the table and just get his treats without putting in the work. Oh, ain't that right, Penny? Wait there for a second. Very nice. Easy. Oh, I think Penny's going to get an A. Oh, very nice. Very nice girl. Oh, good dog. Hup. Oh, get over here on this table, Penny. Oh, hup. Sit. Stay. No, there's no treats for Penny. She's a very pattern cognizant dog. Doesn't require tons and tons of external motivation. Oh, just very good, Penny. Your mom's going to be so proud. Oh, give him my leash back. All right. So what else can I get? Let's get one of these little puppies over here. Oh, puppies, puppies. Denny, come on. Gigi. Oh, do you want to do it, Gigi? Oh, here's a new puppy without a name. Mr. No Name. Oh, and oh, Joe, look. See, this is why I got this dog right here. This dog's bred to be a worker. He's bred like Uncle Stoney. He wants to get up and go to work. So I sit down here and start calling dogs. Hey, Penny, get your head out of my pocket. Oh, he comes over. Now look at Gigi. Gigi's a pretty girl. She gets a lot of attention just for being pretty. Oh, come on, Gigi. Let's show him what you can do. She's from Chicago. Up, up. Oh, very nice, Gigi. You're a smarty. Oh, she doesn't mind this weather too much. She's a plus size. <laughs> These little lab puppies that come down here that are plus sizes, they got a nice layer of insulation on them. So they don't care too much about the, about the weather. They're pretty funny. 
Very nice. Easy. Oh, good girl, Gigi. Up. Oh, that's a good girl. Up, up, up. Oh, don't go around my thing. You got to go this way. Get so excited. Now, see you guys like that right there. We don't mark down for mistakes made uh, with enthusiasm. Like right there, she wasn't trying to get around that obstacle. She just got in such a hurry, she just kind of went in a different direction. It's very important if you're the teacher, you don't mark down for mistakes made uh, for enthusiasm, at least in the beginning stages of your formal education. Good dog. Good dog. Because what you want more than anything else is uh, like a desire to work in conjunction with the handler, a desire to engage in these activities. So if a dog makes a little mistake here and there because they're too excited about doing the work, never fuss about that. Never fuss. Even Lewis, like see how Lewis is jumping up there? In a couple of weeks, that would be considered rude behavior, you know? I'd be like, Lewis, you can't just be coming over here and, and, and knocking into everybody. But right now, I'm not gonna fuss at him because, sit, I'm just happy that he wants to come to class. Look, do you see? He's been here just a couple of days. He doesn't know anything. So all I want him to do is say, hey, when we go outside, Stoney, I want to be a part of what you're doing. You know, I'll get the, I'll get the precision later. As long as he wants to be a part, something good's going to happen for him. Something good's going to happen for Gigi because she's a pretty baby. She's a pretty baby. Stay there. Hey, show him how pretty Gigi is, Eli. Let me get her head up here. Dang. Dang. Very pretty dog. Very pretty dog. We give her a little treat. She's done. She got an A. All right. Now, let's get old. Uh, come here, Denny. Let's get old Denny. Now, you, you all will notice that my pig is making a lot of noise today. <laughs> that kind of makes it hard for these dogs to concentrate. But, like, the pig, that's a Vietnamese pig. And I don't think it gets very cold in Vietnam. And so that pig is complaining about this 20 degree weather. That, that pig's acting like it's in a union or something. And like, we're supposed to have perfect working conditions. Come on. Now, we'll put that pig up in a second. It's got a nice heated uh, room there in my dog kennel. But uh, she's got to get out and do a little work like the rest of us. Good boy. Now, Denny. Oh, typical short hair. Now, look here. This is what I get, guys. This is where you need a lot of patience when you're doing this kind of training. I go to working with one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look, dude. And uh, especially with these short hairs. This is like two having two athletic kids in a class, right? They, uh, they start picking at each other, and the next thing you know, they're disrupting the whole class. Again, you don't want to fuss at them, though, because when you fuss at them, you'll get in that kind of that negative attention seeking where they know that they can kind of goof off and get attention. So I just stop everything and I say, look, guys, you can get some attention, but you get attention around here for being calm and attentive. Good boy. Let's go, and we'll start again. <clears throat> if Lewis gets over here and starts aggravating too much, I'll just kind of give him something to do back there. Oh, come on. You got to go with me, though. Hup. Good boy, Denny. Now, Denny's 14 weeks old. Wait. And you'll notice now with Denny, like the reinforcement schedule, the number of treats that I'm giving him per obstacle is higher than the other dogs. These short ha hairs have a naturally shorter attention span than like some of these other dogs. And the reason is they're bird dogs, you know? You wouldn't want a bird dog that just hangs out with you. You want a bird dog that's impulsive and says, hey, I think there's some birds over there. I'm gonna run over there and check. You know, so with these short hairs, they're always kind of wanting to run off and check. You know, as I walk past here, I'm just going to make sure the dogs understand that being in that tunnel, that's a good place to be. Right? Easy. Come on, come on. Up, up, up. So this is Denny's for the end of his first week. Not doing too bad at all. Good. And we grade on a curve here, you know. So if you've been here four weeks, good. You have to be about perfect. But if you've only been here one week, you just have to be putting good effort in. Come on, easy. Very nice. And we're going to talk more about grading on a curve in a second when we work up, 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 this uh, Bernese Mountain Dog. Good. I'd take him out in the field and show you. Up, up. Very nice. Up, 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 up. Good. Sit and stay. Now I'm going to hold this stay, but I'm going to have to come back and give him a treat every so often because no amount of praying is going to get him to stay there very long. Good. Generally, what we notice with these kind of dogs is the ones that, uh -uh, that are really good at movement. They're not so good at sitting still, especially when it's cold. You can see he's shivering a little bit. Oh, good dog. Now, oh, come here, Tucker. What are you doing? Tucker, come here. Okay, so this is Tucker. Now, oh, 
Tucker's a good boy, right? He came to us. He's been a little bit rude to his mom. Now, let me move to, let me walk. I'm going to come, come out here, Eli. We'll kind of watch Tucker walk around. <clears throat> now, you'll notice, I'm going to swing out this way, Eli, and come around. As I'm coming around, I want you to notice. <clears throat> so, when Tucker walks, you notice at his gait, he's got a little bit of an awkward gait, okay? See how, see how, see how his, his feet just kind of a little bit out of sync and his back end moves around a little bit like that? Okay, so when we get a dog that is going to have a hard time, like with the whole small challenges course, what we do is we just break the small challenges course into the parts where the dog can get it, right? So again, we always grade on a curve here, and that curve is primarily... Um, <clears throat> centered around effort level okay because all we really need out of a dog is to come be still and have good manners all the stuff that we do with them during the day all the taking them places and doing stuff with them what's going on there is we're just trying to use those activities to facilitate our ability to communicate to the dog what's expected and to motivate the dog to do what's expected okay so i don't have to have every single thing here on the small challenges course to make use of this philosophy of training good boy I can just use whatever is challenging for that particular dog and so like for this particular dog these smaller things the things will keep his feet on the ground are pretty challenging now once we start to master that you know then we will we will try to you know find some other stuff that we can do that's hard but this dog because of how his gait is because of how his feet work this right here it's going to be real hard for him. He's just not going to be able to narrow his feet enough to walk on this uh, plank. So what I'll do is I'll come over here and I'll just reward him for, you know, kind of doing it as he can. So he just put a couple of feet up on there. I, I'm perfectly happy with that. You know, I'm happy with anybody that tries to be the best they can be. And if this is the best you can be, hey, look, that's cool. I'm happy with it. I'm just interested in you making effort towards being the best you can be. Now here's something he can do. Good. Now these steps, when Tucker first got here, these steps were a no-go. He just, he just didn't think he could do them. At his own home, his owner would try to pick him up and <laughs> carry him up and down the steps. And so, you know, it could be hard, right? But now look at him. He's going to come over here. Dang, very nice. And it took us a little while, but we got it. Now this, too dangerous for a dog that doesn't have good balance. So we just skip that. Now look at this short hair. These short hairs are supreme athletes. All right, so now this is something that uh, Tucker can do if he concentrates. I'm going to help him concentrate. Whoa. Now, you see I get... Let me come back here and do that part again. <clears throat> so this is a lot of effort level right here for this dog. And I want you to show, show you how you can kind of sometimes tell that a dog has a little bit of apprehension about something. Is there like a kid on a high dive where like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then they all of a sudden just jump off right and you appreciate the effort but you want to help him do it a little better so right here as we bring him up here you see that how he takes that big jump and we run into that a lot but when you're a big dog and you don't have the best balance that can kind of create some problems later on we don't want him like sprinting through some stairs or something so i'm going to break this i'm going to break this obstacle down into some smaller pieces oh and <laughs> i don't need you to jump buddy i'm going to try to slow him down a little bit good and get him to think about going over it calmly. Very nice. Calmly. Very nice. Much better. And again here on the dog walk, we'll just skip that because, you know, it's, it's not something that, that's in the cards for this particular dog. So we're still going to make it so that he can get an A. We're just going to grade him kind of on a curve. Even right here. I know this is going to be hard for this dog. So watch, I'm going to come back here and give him a lot of extra help. Oh my gosh, very nice, very nice. And where it's going to get hard, right here is where we have to make this turn. He always forgets about where his rear end is. So I'm going to kind of lead him with one hand and guide his rear end with the other hand. Keep him safe, good. Very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice. Hey, he did it, good job, good boy. So see his attitude's uh, upbeat, he's happy. Good. He's making good effort. He's uh, <clears throat> sit, overcoming the apprehension he has about certain obstacles. Oh, even to the point to where, like, sometimes he gets himself in a little bit of danger. And we have to step in and protect him from himself. 
But all in all, look at that nice sit stay. He's controlling his emotions. That's very nice. So see, we can even give Tucker an A. Good boy. Good boy. Sit there though. Very nice. Oh, okay. Oh, all righty. It looks like one of my, <laughs> uh, one of my nine o'clock is here. Only an hour late, so I'm going to have to cut this short. I'll see y'all later.